Hey guys, it's George with Diamond Yard Sports Cards. Thank you for joining me. Um, thank you to uh, Bench Clear Media for putting Hobby to Hobby Palooza 2021 together. Um, we're really excited about this. Um, I'm thank you to my baseball collector and Ty and uh, for giving us the opportunity to uh, have this program today. We're going to talk some vintage cards, and this is going to be the first of two hours in a row that we talk uh, that the vintage cards are going to be on. Uh, Ray from Philly is going to have a broadcast. After hours is done, and I would encourage you uh, to watch his watch his feed. And he's he's just a great great asset to the community. But speaking about great asset to the community, we have two awesome channels here, two awesome guys. Uh, we have Chuck Northside guy and Don of Don's Field of Dreams cards. How you guys doing? Great, doing well. Thanks for having us. And we're spanning uh, we're spanning uh, the United States. Uh, I'm out in Arizona. We got Don in Pittsburgh and Chuck in uh, Chuck in Chicago. So we've got. Uh, the whole, uh, the whole uh, time zone, I guess, uh, taken care of. Mm -hmm. So, guys, uh, I guess I'm going to start uh, with you, Chuck. If you could tell us a little bit about your channel and. Uh, yeah, I, I started. Uh, I was inspired by uh, one of uh, Dave uh, uh, Blue Jacket '66 contest to film my inaugural video, probably about a year and a half ago, two years ago. And uh, once I figured out this YouTube thing. Uh, I, I had long been watching, but I started producing and I started with uh, featuring cards and some stories of the players on those cards from the 1933 Gaudi set, which was the first vintage set I uh, started collecting uh, when I got back in the hobby uh, after a 33-year uh, break um, in 2018. So I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that today. That's great. Um, and you, Don, how did you uh, get into the hobby or back into the hobby? I um I just started watching YouTube videos. I've only been making videos since December, and uh, I was actually watching a video with Eric Goes Back Pages talking about just make a video. And in the the comments, I said I'd love to do this, but I'm scared to do it. But you know, I I have no one to talk to about baseball cards, and I love the interactions. He's like, if you have a cell phone, make a video, and that's what I did. And here we are today. So that's how I got back into. Uh, I had started collecting, but really getting into the hobby and interacting with people was because of that. Yeah, it is a great community. And just looking over here, I mean, I see so many people commenting, hey, guys, you know, uh, James Elite Hunter, Scott Scani Tradition, She Blinded Me with Refractors, Mike Top Finish 316, yeah. Mike O. It's awesome, guys. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have a lot to talk about. And so, um, again, I'm really excited to have you guys on. Thanks for joining me. You bet. Thanks for having so, us. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we're going to start here talking about the 33 Gaudi set, uh, which, you know, is the one of the crown jewel sets in our in our um, in our hobby. So, Chuck, uh, tell us a little bit about your your how you became acquainted with the 36 or 33 Gaudi set and uh, and how you've started to have you how you tried to collect it. I was uh, a, like many, a boyhood collector, took a break after 1985. I was 16 or 17 then. And and. Uh, uh, back in, uh, I, I do a lot of uh, business out in New York City, and uh, one afternoon my meetings were canceled, and I had heard there was a baseball card exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It was Jefferson Burdick's collection, which is a very famous collection. He's one of the uh, founding collectors, if you will, of our hobby. And I walked the uh, the displays uh, in the museum, and I just kept coming back to um, these vintage cards, and it really lit uh, lit me up. And a few years later, after I uh, had the good fortune of selling a, a business, I uh, uh, I found that uh, you know I kind of needed a hobby, and uh, got back and uh, looking at my old cards uh, from my mom's house when she was downsizing. I said, you know, why did I ever get away from this wonderful hobby? And so I started uh, uh, with the thirty-three Gaudi. I didn't know anything about the graded. Uh, I started buying uh, my first graded from Dean's cards. Um, you know, I learned later that those. <laughs> Uh, inflate it, but you got some good uh, deals there, didn't you, Chuck? Well, I'll tell you, um, no comment. But the, the point is, I, I just loved it, and uh, I made every mistake in the book, and I won't get into that. I cover that in some of my videos. But hey, Chuck, I, the, those Dean's cards actually are now they seem like they're good deals, isn't there something? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you anyway. But there's just the principle of the thing that I was gouged a few years ago. But I digress, these cards are treasured. It's a big set. The 1933 Gaudi set for a vintage is a pretty big set. I mean, obviously the monster is the biggest uh, uh, when we think of that. But, um, you know, the 33 Gaudi is beautiful. 
Uh, it's 240 cards. Um, it was sold during the Depression uh, for a penny a pack. And for that penny, you would get one card and one stick of gum, slab of gum. Uh, the card stock is, is a very thick card stock. When you look at the back of the cards, there's a lot more descriptive text about the player. And, uh, you know, as with any set collector, I went down the rabbit hole and uh, started collecting. It's a set that has just innumerable uh, Hall of Famers in it, uh, people that really are uh, in the pantheon of our hobby, four Babe Ruths, two Lou Gehrig's, two Jimmy Foxes, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, going down the line. Um, it has so much nuance. I've talked a lot about that in recent videos as I've gotten deeper into my uh, T206 collection over the last year. Nuance and scarcity are things that, as a vintage collector, really excite me. Uh, and to hold in your hand something that is one of less than 100 uh, graded is, is really, I think, something for me special. It connects me to um, you know, the, the history of the game. Uh, I view these as artifacts of American history. Um, I happen to find them aesthetically pleasing. Uh, and I, I, I never get old, and I'm, I'm sure this is cliche for everyone listening, it never gets old looking at cards you love, whether it's your boyhood cards, whether it's a classic vintage set. So that's a little bit about my initial journey in the, in the Gaudi. So how did you, um, <clears throat> how did you determine which cards to go after with that set? Because it is, like you said, 240 cards for a set. Uh, the first really, uh, the first set after, you know, the war, the Great War, and, and, and really like the promulgation of gum and selling gum uh, really was the big deal. 240 cards is a lot. How do you, how did you attack that initially? Uh, well, I, I don't want to go too much into discussions on budget, but obviously budget has to, uh, I, I made a decision that I was going to collect PSA 5 and higher. Uh, and that becomes a quickly you realize even <laughs> in the world outside of Dean's it becomes an expensive proposition with this set. So, um, you know, that is a reality. I'm a married guy, two kids living in the People's Republic here of Chicago. So it's an expensive life already. Uh, but this uh, this was something I was determined to, to see if I could build this set. And I'm not quite complete. Um, uh, there is a few cars remaining and uh, it's going to be a. Uh, uh, difficult uh, persuading the wife that, uh, uh, you know, the price for a, a B. Ruth or a, a Lajewe is, is worth it. Uh, I just read something this week that the average, the median price of a home in America today is about uh, 300000 And uh, so you think 20% down, that's 60000 And you think, what is if uh, some of these Babe Ruth cards and Lajewe cards are uh, up in that territory? So that's going to be a tough one for me to crack. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do it. So stay tuned there. That will be, that'll be quite a video someday when I display that kind of vault card. So, yeah, I mean, and then you, you start collecting and uh, you make, uh, it was a lot of trial and error. Uh, the centering on this set, and we're going to show some cards in a few minutes here. You know, the centering is very difficult. Um, there's something called foxing, which is um, brown spots from aging uh, paper. Uh, you have to look for that. Um, the corners, I'm a big corner guy. Um, cornering mattered, at least when I initially got back in the hobby, is, is kind of my, the first thing I was looking for. And then I learned about centering from this community, actually. And, and so as my collecting has gone on, I have actually gone back and um, acquired some of the same cards again, just because they are better versions, better examples. And uh, so it's a, a trial and error process. Um, but what you're left with at the end of the day is, uh, you know, something that just you do, a, you lay it out in your office and, and you just say, my gosh, I can't believe this is my collection. There's just there's just something so special uh, about having this set um, and, and calling it my own. Um, it, it's going to be it is a passion for sure. Well, yeah, I remember when I, I was a kid, my grandfather gave me a Burt Randolph Sugar. I've talked about this before. Burt Randolph Sugar's uh, like Dover reprints book. And I don't mm -hmm. have it with me right now, but there were a slew of 33 Gaudis in there. And I think as yeah. like a, a nine and 10 year old, I, I tried to pass them off as my, as, as originals to my friends after I got them out of the perforated edges. Yeah. Um, and the Gaudi 144 Ruth, I see LA collection. Larry made a comment about it being iconic. I mean, they're all iconic, but that, yeah, that 144 Ruth is something special. Well, let's talk some numbers for a second on the Ruths. So we all know one or more of the Ruths. Um, uh, I, I certainly think each of them are iconic. Uh, certainly one or two definitely are. 
Um, when you look at uh, the PSA graded examples of all four of these cards, from a PSA five and up, there's only 835 of these Ruth cards out there in a PSA. Think about that, 835 of cards that we all know that we all would love to have in our collection at this grade or higher. And so that's real scarcity, best ball player ever, uh, probably and arguably some of the best version cards uh, depicting Babe Ruth, in my opinion. Uh, and so they're very special. And, uh, um, you know, when you break that down, it's, it's uh, you know, 164 of the uh, number 53 and 49, 149. Uh, for that 144 uh, Babe Ruth, that was actually double printed, appeared on a couple of the sheets. And so there's actually uh, 258 of them in the PSA 5 and greater. So you're talking a real scarcity. And anytime you see them up for auction, that is a competitive auction. Um, it is always uh, an anchor uh, in, in some of the major auction houses when you see it in those higher grades. Yeah, and what I like to... Uh point out a lot of times is the fact that there's a, a whole bunch of people out there that will snap even even something as rare as a Gaudi card whether it's a Hubble or a Hornsby or Ruth they'll yeah. snap them out and resub them so and not turn in the flip and so yeah. that population report you're saying I believe is is much is not much lower but I'm sure it's 20 per 15 percent lower I'm it's speculating here uh you know so I mean I think they're even more rare than, than you're saying Chuck yeah so and then the rarest of all is the Napoleon Lajewe so there were 240 sets uh, cards in this set, and I'm sure many people watching this already know the story, but if you don't, it's kind of an interesting story. Uh, the Lajoy card is number 106 in this set. It was actually not issued in 1933. It was a chase card. It was the ultimate chase card. It just wasn't produced. And so you'd have these uh, collectors, these little boys going out there looking to build a full set and not finding the Lajoy. And so they would write these letters. And in 1934, Gaudi started um, uh, sending these cards out, uh, but the, uh, to, they would only send them to people who uh, requested it by mail. And when they mailed it, they would mail it with a paper clip on it. So, you know, you hear that today, you just kind of shudder. Um, so there's 79 Lajoie cards that are graded by PSA. Um, and uh, in the PSA 5 and greater, there's only 47. So when you look in the hobby, this is uh, one of those scarce and, and very rare cards. Um, I haven't, I don't have that one yet, but uh, hopefully someday. Chuck, is it is it true that they intentionally didn't print the card because yes. they wanted people to be keep buying yeah. packs? Yes, that's right. right. Keep buying gum. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, for sure. And and uh, uh, you know some. Uh, we can have a separate conversation about the, the scams in the hobby today, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, a long and colorful history around that. And Don, did you ever get exposed to the 33 Gaudi set or how did you know about it? I mean, I, I love the 33 Gaudi. I, I had a Paul Wayner years mm -hmm. ago. I think I've told this story before. Around 08, I was in real estate and, and the market crashed and I had to sell all my cards. Um, so I'm very familiar with them and I love them. Um, I just got a Gaudi recently, but it's a 34. Um, but just even talking to Chuck, like I had no idea there were two Jimmy Foxes, two Lou Gehrig's. And I was asking like, what am I missing here? What is different about these cars? Because I assumed there was something different and I couldn't figure it out. And maybe you want to talk about that, Chuck. But it, like we said earlier, I love cars that look like artwork. And that's a that this says a classic example of that. Right, it's it's maddening uh, if you have the OCD of a, <laughs> a true collector. Uh, if you want every card in this set, it would be great if I had two different versions of a Jimmy Fox and two different versions of a Lou Gehrig. But no, you got to get the same damn card. I mean, and and we'll show <laughs> a few examples in a minute. And it's it's maddening because uh, invariably there are these hall of famers. I mean, Jimmy Fox and Luke Garrett are not cheap cards uh, in these grades. And uh, so, uh, but I, I, you know, I have them, but they're ex identical. Then there are other cards of other players like Carl Hubble, Mel Ott, uh, you know, Heine Manouche, um, uh, not that he should be in the same category as those others, but uh, uh, that are multiple cards and they're all different. Um, uh, Rogers Hornsby, for example, uh, one of his is actually a, a horizontal card. Uh, I mean, a, a vertical. So, um, you know, it's 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 fascinating to see the choices made in this set. And uh, 
Um, it's understandable with the Ruth and Gehrig, but you would think uh, with Gehrig, they would have a different image. Uh, he was certainly a, you know, a very popular chase card back in the day. Yeah, you, like, in, so, like in 34. Why, oh, I'm sorry, George, go ahead. I, I, I was I just saying, like in 34, the 34 Gaudi Gehrig yeah. is beautiful. And, and two entirely different images. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, those are gorgeous cards, the, the, the 34 uh, Gehrig's, uh, 34 Gaudi Gehrig's, uh, of course. So I just want to say something real quick, guys. Uh, we'll be having a giveaway before we start showing some cards, which we're going to go small and, and put some cards up. And Chuck's going to tell us about these beautiful 33 Gaudis uh, that, that he's uh, let us going to get, let us look at. But uh, we are going to have a giveaway. Uh, we're giving away a Champions League. Thanks to uh, Banks Clear, Bench Clear Media, we're giving away a Champions League uh, Chrome box. Uh, I'll be doing a trivia question later on at, toward the end. Uh, and whoever answers it first in the comments will uh, receive that box from bench clear and i also want to say guys i'm reading and looking at all your comments and so is chuck and um so is don so just keep commenting we're just trying to keep this going and i really appreciate all the comments so I let's look at learned some how now i understand why people don't respond this thing is going so <laughs> fast yeah it, really it is, is. <laughs> and just so many great tubers on here and people in the community uh making comments so we really appreciate it uh we're going to share the screen here and uh if it works and we're going to talk about some cards um, that Chuck had sent over. Uh, and I'll minimize it here shortly. You know, by this point, um, I've featured most of these cards in standalone videos um, and encourage you if you're interested. Um, I uh, kind of uh, really uh, focus on about three or four cards uh, in each of these 33 Gaudi videos. And so they're pretty well-labeled uh, if you're at all interested. Um, so yeah, this is this is just a six and you can see on the left, right on the centering. Yes, it's that. just six. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just love this one. And, and uh, uh, you know, this is an example of a six. Um, uh, primarily uh, in a six, you're not going to see wrinkles. Uh, you're not gonna see much of this uh, foxing that I was talking about with the brown spots. Sometimes you will. Good corners, obviously, and uh, this is what passes uh, for good centering. If you want to get uh, pinpoint centering, you're, you're, you're up in the PSA 8, and so uh, the, the pricing on these uh, just goes exponential um, from 5, 6, 7, and 8, and there's a few 9 or 10s if you can believe it out there. And in 1933, I mean, weren't the, the giants there with Bill Terry and another giant we're going to show here? I mean, they were leading yeah. the way in Major League Baseball. Yeah. Yeah, so these were big cards. So again, a good crisp image, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, just love it. Yeah, I love that bat, that green background, and it's a, it's an old grade six, Chuck. You know, you might be able to get a bump to a six point five. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> That's a <good laughs> conversation about PSA these days, but anyway. Uh, Dizzy Dean, of course, here is a five point five. So you know, you see the centering again, and it kind of looks the same as the the six. So I, 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 uh, I'm not smart enough to know the nuance. I, I, uh, I think what's neat here is um, you're going to see just with the examples, just the breadth of Hall of Famers, um, you know, big names in the game. And it's just one after the other. And so um, it's really neat to even beyond the roots and the Garrigs, you get down and there's just so much, so much talent in this set. And, and we have to remember this was the year of the first All-Star game as well. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, you've got – I mean, Dizzy Dean also wore the mantle of the greatest pitcher in the game for, for a short mm -hmm. period of time. And yeah. I believe and Carl Hubble also. So sure. yeah, just a beautiful card. I love the, I love the ground in the bottom on this. This It's almost looks like he's playing like at the local, the local field. Yeah. And what's really interesting in this set is they use probably five or six different artists. And so you can see the different styles, each of these artists, it's almost like the, uh, uh, you know, the Project 2020 or Project 70, every, you know, I mean, obviously it's a modern interpretation and modern art, but the artists here were, uh, you'll see in some of these are just different styles and you can see uh, in different groupings who, uh, you know, the similar artist. And uh, so I have my favorites, but uh, yeah, this is a nice one. That's really and cool. That's, I had no idea there were different artists. Yeah. And I love the shadows that they paint in on these sets too. Yeah. All these stars. They're really great. And you have to remember, this was uh, in an era when color photography wasn't widespread yet. Right. And so, uh, you know, color images, uh, albeit, you know, art artistic here, 
um, where one way that uh, may have been very exciting for you know a collector, a young collector back then. And Chuck, are the most of these uh, paintings done based upon photos, or do you know? I, I, yes, to answer your question. Okay. And I don't. I haven't gone down the path of, of buying those photos, uh, the type one or type twos. Um, you know, Carl Hobble. This is some nice centering here. Uh, if you look at his face there, uh, particularly if you see it, hold this card in person, you'll. The detail is just amazing. Uh, <clears throat> it really is the face, and 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 he was, uh, of course, a big name pitcher. Then. Uh, did you did you guys ever hear about George Plimpton? I uh, used to talk on was I think it may have been on uh, Ken Burns baseball about how he would walk with his arm inward because he was such a Giants fan as a kid because he was trying to impersonate Carl Hubble because yeah. he'd thrown that screwball so much his arm was permanently twisted inward. Well, that's a better story than mine. I used to imitate Mickey Rivers uh, coming up to bat, if anyone remembers that. So uh, anyway, that's another story. <laughs> and at one time in Little League, I, I tried pitching like Louis Tian, you know, with the one of his things where he you know completely turned himself around. I ended up tripping, but uh, anyway, <laughs> that was a little goofball for sure. So that Hubble has uh, there's a, that, uh, the other Hubble that's the uh, the horizontal Hubble. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So uh, this is just I, I just like this one because of the detail in the face. And is that it's not the same image as Sport Kings, is it? It's it's similar. I I, I don't know on the spot here. Um, yeah, but I, I'm going to say it's pretty darn similar. Yeah, if not, I yeah. Don't. So Benny Bengao is the first, uh, and I've talked about this. This is uh, for, for folks that collect like the 1952 tops. You know, the Andy Pafko is is uh, the number one card in that set, and uh, you know, with the the rubber bands and collections and all that, the, the first and last cards of the set, obviously, we all know, get banged around. Uh, you know, Benny Bengao, uh, he was a part time Yankee catcher, played on a, a lot of those famous 20s and early 30s Yankee teams. Uh, got abused as a first card. Uh, <laughs> this is my only SGC card. I've only seen it come up in a PSA 5 or up uh, in an auction. And a PSA 5 auction happened about a month or two ago, and it went for uh, this 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 card in a 5 PSA went for over 10000 So this is a wow. this is a tough card to get, and and uh, I, I allowed myself to kind of step outside of my PSA discipline to to get it in the SGC. Uh, I didn't pay ten thousand for this card, but I, I just think it's a beautifully uh, well kept. Corners are really sharp, um, pretty decent centering. Even though they call it a five point five, it's not. Uh, I, I've actually tried to find better centering examples of my other Gaudis, but uh, this is a special uh, card uh, if you're really into this set. Uh, you don't see this very often um, in a five or up. Wow, I love it. So this. <laughs> This is a, a, what a PSA 8 looks like, and uh, I, I, you'll see the centering, it, and you'll see the color is, is very sharp. It's almost uh, like it's out of a pack. Um, the reverse of this is also very clear, uh, no browning, no toning. Uh, in this case, it happens to be Joe Judge. Um, and so uh, I, I'm selectively upgrading some cards to an 8 uh, just because I, I, I just really – like I said, I've fallen in love with these cards. I, I fall in love with them again and again and and uh, can't help myself. I, I just, uh, the addiction sometimes where you have to upgrade your, your card. So um, I just wanted folks to see what a good centered example of a Gaudi looks like. Uh, and, and this is going to be difficult to find with the other uh, physical attributes of a card. Yeah, the, the color. I mean, the, the white edges on that. Yeah. Just look, I mean, it could have been a card from the 80s, you know, it just mm -hmm. the, the white. I showed, mm -hmm. I showed this picture to my 10-year-old son, Gavin, last night, and he just couldn't believe it. Like, oh, my gosh. It's like it doesn't look all yellow like the other you know, other yeah. cards do of that era. Mm -hmm. and, and like you said, this this big league chewing gum, the banner at the bottom, that the pink banner, you know, yeah. the colors on that, it just yeah. it, it just pops. Yeah, it really does. And and there's been, uh, in, in the REA auction, uh, has uh, sold... Uh, three or four examples of the um, advertising banner that was handed out to the stores that would uh, sell these cards. And uh, this is one of those things I regret not purchasing an example of it and getting it framed uh, a few years ago before our hobby went so crazy. Because, yeah. you know, the pricing is now just uh, ridiculous. But uh, um, yeah. And, and then here are the Fox, Jimmy Fox. So you see, it's exactly the same. And uh, you also see the variability. If you look at the one on the left, 
That's a low number. Uh, cards one through 52 in this set are considered the low numbers. Uh, and those are the, the more scarce and difficult ones. Uh, the centering, in my opinion, is better on the, uh, on the one on the right. Um, so, uh, and, and you see it's the exact same image. And uh, so this is one where I had to just swallow hard one day and uh, <laughs> buy, buy uh, the card I needed to, to, you know, fill out the set. But it's, yeah, and he was such a great hitter on such a great team. Those A's teams were just yeah. – uh, they were better than the Yankees for a period of time. Yeah, that's right. Well, Chuck, is this the last one we got? I think it yeah, is. I think so, and I uh, uh, always love talking about it. And, uh, boy, this hour is going quickly. So uh, let me stand down. <laughs> well, actually, Chuck, let me ask you one more question. Can you yeah. talk about the Mo Berg a little bit and why Mo Berg is significant in this set? Yes. I'm sorry I didn't include that uh, – so Mo Berg was uh, a catcher, and in world, uh, he also was uh, uh, college educated. Uh, I think he's an Ivy League grad. It was an Ivy League grad, and in World War II, he was a member of the OSS, the precursor to the CIA, and was a spy. And uh, uh, so he appears. Uh, the famous image when we hear the Mo Berg story, and I'm sure there are among our listeners, there's people who know a lot more than I do about the Mo Berg story, but it's a fascinating one. And again, it's just a, one of the many, many examples uh, in the 33 Gaudi set. When you dig into the history of these guys, uh, I just think it's endlessly fascinating. That's why when I was uh, filming a lot of these videos, I was trying to tell the story because it adds just another layer of appreciation. We don't talk about these guys as often as we talk about the, the players from the more modern era. And so uh, just the joy. And I, I, uh, I'm, I'm so glad I had a chance to speak about it and share and uh Hope uh, hope you've all found it interesting. Yeah, Chuck, thank you so much. You bet. So the next, uh, Don, we're going to talk now about mod the modern, this is, I guess, a modern set. The modern part of this vintage set, right. <laughs> I'm going to change the banner here up a little bit, but, um, and then kind of, uh, let's see here. So, Don, go ahead and go ahead and discuss. Well, we're going to talk about '76 tops, and yeah. let us know so, why that's kind of, why that's important. Tops has a special place in my heart. It, it's not my favorite looking set, but uh, when I was nine years old, I wiped out on my bicycle across the street in the neighbor's yard and got 15 stitches, and to this day, I still have a big scar on my knee. And the, the woman across the street bought me a pack of 1976 cards. First pack of baseball cards I ever owned. I can't tell you who was in that pack, and I really can't tell you why that made me fall in love with that set, but it did. And my younger brother is only a year younger than I. We, My mom would take us to this place called Murphy's Mart, which I don't know if you had those. It was like a Kmart or a Target, and the packs were 25 cents. We were not looking for Hank Aaron, George Brett, any Hall of Famers, because you could see in the cards, we were looking for Pirates. It was like, you know, for you guys that don't know, I live in Pittsburgh, and I'm a Pirates fan. So it was like Kent to Colby, Bill Robinson, Ed Ott. These are awesome. And um, my mother, when my parents would go away for a weekend, like my mom was famous for getting us stuff behind my dad's back. He, he, was, <laughs> he was a pro. My history. mom, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was like, you know, a quarter. What are you wasting money on cards? And she would buy his packs. And when they'd go away on weekends, she'd sneak them into our suitcases. So we, we got to my aunt and uncle's, those packs would be in there. So that set just holds so many memories uh, of, of my childhood. And there's a lot of great Hall of Famers in it. Mm. You know, I grew up in the 70s. We're all relatively the same age. Um, you know, so just those cards just bring back memories. Like, I love, I love Gaudi. But I don't have any, obviously, any memory of Gaudi. You know what I mean? And another set I'm going to talk about today that I love, I don't have the physical attachment that I do to this collection. So this beauty right here. <laughs> it is a beauty. That, don't be jealous. <laughs> Y'all can't afford what I can here. <laughs> this, well, is, uh, this is an original card of mine. And um, I love this card because it's mine. We, we played with our cards. We trashed them. We had no idea. Like, you know, I'm so glad I held on to it, to be honest. And, um, you know, it, again, it, it brings back my childhood. It, and, George, if you can go to the back of this card, I'll explain really why this card. You got it. So you notice here there's there's two Ds. 
I did not want my brother stealing my cards. He was a year younger. So all my cards from this era have my initial on them. And I don't know if you can tell, but these were checklists. So what did I do? I checked off the cards I had because that's what I thought you were supposed to do. Now, if it was reversed, these cards with writing on, I'd be like, hey, they're, they're yours, Matt. It's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to show that, that, you know, that's what we did back then. We had no idea that these were going to be worth anything. You know, they were just fun. And um, it's just great memories looking at that card and <laughs> and uh, and seeing my initials on it from when I was nine years old. And it's, uh, you know, now I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit more pickier on my cards. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw on the front there, it was the manager was Danny Murtaugh, and I was reading yeah. up about him based upon your card. I was reading up about him and how the thought is he should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he won two World Series with the Pirates, 60 and 71. And uh, I believe he passed away right around this time because Chuck Tanner, I think, came in in 77. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, he, he was a good manager. So, And Chuck, you said that this was part of your – before we started the stream, you said this yeah. is part of your childhood, too. Oh, you were for sure. Yeah, and the cards we're going to show next are just, uh, well, for all guys uh, probably our age who are childhood collectors, these uh, you know, these are these are just iconic. I can't use that word every time. Amazing sets in the pantheon of, of our memory. Yeah. And look at this beauty. Holy smokes. And I threw this in in honor of George, yeah. George Brett. Love George He's Brett. Great. But – uh. And this is a really hard card to find in, in, mm -hmm. in a good condition. And I don't know if you guys have seen, I did a whole video on this collection and, and they're all SGC. They're all new label going back to OCD, Chuck. Like it makes no sense why I did it, but I did. And once yeah. it started, it had to be that. And it was originally going to be eights and higher, but I did settle for a few sevens, which yeah, I don't really want to sound settling because I'm thrilled with that. Well, that's a good I would venture to say that that 76 Brett in a high grade is more valuable than the, the rookie. Is that, is that accurate? You guys think? Uh, yeah. I, think I mean, I, I don't, I don't think, think there are any PSA 10s in this card. Yeah. Yeah. LA collection just said no PSA 10s. Yeah. It's a beautiful card. And, and yeah, this is a nicely centered seven. I mean, yeah. really nice. This not only is this my favorite card of this set, it's one of my all-time favorites. Um, and it, it was it was so awesome just getting these cards again in nice condition after what I did to them as a kid. Um, I just thought it was really cool. But I'm, I'm guessing somebody had just slid in with all the dust, and he doesn't have the ball, and he looks pissed. <laughs> I just scored. That's how I interpret it. But I just really thought it was a great card. I think Johnny Bench – as some of the coolest in action cards uh, of some of the players out there. And I really love that, that all-star star at the yeah. bottom, yeah. Uh, on both on 75 and, and 76. I think Tops so did cool. a really good job that year of the, the color combinations for the teams. Like they just really match and look nice in my opinion. Yeah. This wasn't a giveaway set, you know, like you can look sometimes at the late sixties sets and, they're reusing photos and the right. designs. I know some people really like the burlap. Um, the 69 set is, to me, kind of unimaginative. This set has some imagination. Yep. Um, and then the colors just pop. And I love this bench card because look at the size of that catcher's mitt. I yeah. mean, it's a big catcher's mitt. And the old helmets, they're just turned reverse. They're just regular batting helmets. Yeah. So this is the only rookie card in this set. And it's probably one of the few Dennis Ecker, Eckersley mm -hmm. uh, cards where he doesn't have his mustache. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I can think of other ones. Um, but it's the only Hall of Fame rookie card in this whole set. And uh, this is one I turned in myself for grading. Mm. Uh, so I was happy with the grade. Actually, this set, I have all the Hall of Famers except for the – there's one Hall of Famer that's in the traded set, and that's the Fergie Jenkins and um, I, I don't collect that. I just collected the original mm -hmm. cards. And because I was so OCD and I had to have them in this label in SGC, I, I had to submit 75% of them myself um, because I just no one else has collected them. <laughs> like, that, they're all PSA. So quick question, Don, on this. I always wondered, maybe I haven't studied this set, but I always wondered that the image that you see in the lower left-hand corner of pitcher in a right-hand Mm -hmm. I always wondered if uh, the image uh, would, would 
was telling us if it was a right or left-handed pitcher, for example. And I, I, I never follow that fact through. I have to study my cards. Think about that. And I don't know if I have a left-handed picture in there. I have some cards over there. I don't want to. Yeah, or if it's just an right. image for off. Check it out. That's uh, that's interesting. Yeah. I want to say it is, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think the lefties do have a lefty, and, and if someone in the comments knows and can put that in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I always love those the picture. You you have so many different kind of outlined f pictures of guys. Um, and this Eckersley card, it's interesting to me because, you know, he really wasn't, and you guys know this, he wasn't a Hall of Famer. Um, you know, it took a long time until the late 80s when he became that ace reliever on the Oakland A's. Where he, he was a starter. Yeah, and he was a good starter, but, he, you know, he wasn't for Bly Levin and he wasn't Jim Palmer. But he just became, you know, this kind of, you know, kind of the path John Smoltz took in a way. But earlier, I think, because I think Smoltz yeah. would have got in as a starter without the reliever. I don't think Eckersley mm -hmm. would have. You yeah, know, what a, I, I want to say Bruce Suter, you know, Raleigh Fingers. I think all those guys were probably starters at one time back in the day and then got moved, you know, Gossage maybe, you know, at least in the minor leagues, maybe not the major leagues. Yeah. I and mean, Benak had seasons where he won double digit games and yeah, he did. Real good Absolutely. for the Red Sox. And, um, it's a great card, though. I love the colors. I mean, you know, those Indian those Indians uniforms back then were kind of polarizing. It's like you either really like them or you think they're terrible. Look, look at the warm up; it's like a windbreaker. You know? <laughs> and now it's like I think I had that in third grade. So this card, what I think is cool about this, first of all, there's a pirate in the background, so I liked it as a kid. But you've obviously got the Hall of Famer Lou Brock. But what's fascinating about this card, and I, I told these guys this offline, this card or this photo was actually taken in 1973, even though it's a 1976 card. And the reason I know that on Jackie Hernandez, who's I think he's playing second, or probably second, not short back there, um, he's got a number 21 patch on his shoulder. And that was in honor of Roberto Clemente. And they only wore that patch in 1973. So if you look close enough, if any of you guys have this card, you'll see that patch. So it's kind of funny. Is, that, it, right, is it right there, Don? Am I? Am I yes, right in that area. There should be. Oh, a, it's, I'm sorry. It's very simple. It's just a black 21 with a circle on it. And um, so you know this card, this photo is three years old. It's this 1976 card, but the photo was taken in 1973. So mm -hmm. I always thought that was kind of cool. You know, I, I love this card as a kid, and and I when my you know you're buying. I didn't really see Lou Brock play too much, but I knew he was awesome, and and I was I bought this card, and you know with him being such a great base dealer, this card reminds me of the '82 Tops Ricky Henderson card. You know where it's like he's on the base paths in that '82 yeah. Tops card, and he's doing what he does best. Right. And this Lou Brock card kind of um, you know really makes me think of that way, think of it too. Like yeah, it looks he, like he's ready to take off. Yeah, he's ready to do what he's been doing for the last 15 years. You know. Absolutely. So, of course, I had to include a pirate. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite players as a kid was Pops. And, uh, Chuck, you were talking about imitating Louis Tion, and, and you mentioned uh, Carl yeah. Hubbard. Well, yeah. we all did the big the big swing in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, everyone knew that famous batting stance. Yeah. And uh, this, is, this was the highest grade that I turned in and got. I, I don't have any 10s in the collection, and, I, and I'm fine with that. Um, just, you know, as much as I love Roberto Clemente, I, I, I didn't get to see him play. I was alive, but I was, I was young. I got to see Willie Stargell and Dave Parker play in the 1979 Pirates where family was my team. You know, I remember my dad let me stay up to watch those games. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that that would be the last World Series I've seen. The Pirates <laughs> team. But um, – just a classic card that I loved as a kid. And again, the green and yellow and the Oakland A's have the same combination. I think it's flipped. I think it's green on top and yellow on back. I just, even though the pirates don't have green in their uniform, it, it just worked for me on these cards. I don't, I don't know why, but um, just love how they look. And Don, if, what were some of the, like, what are some of the condition issues you've seen with 76? Do they have any strange like roller mark or, or any, no, anything? I, I think, and Chuck, chime in if you know anything that I don't on these. I think it's mostly the centering. Um, for me, Nolan Ryan was very tough to find centered. Uh, George Brett, obviously, I think that's yeah. most well known. And, and I just collect Hall of Famers, so I, I don't know about the common. 
there could be issues and mm -hmm. things with those. Um, but as far as like the, uh, oh, what am I saying? The, um, the look of the cars, the coloring, and you know, I don't think there's any issues. You don't really see the, the little fish eyes on these cards that you do on some sets. Um, I, I think it's just centering. You know Chuck. what I've noticed? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chuck. No, 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 no. I'm listening here. Okay. I, I've know. noticed uh, I have some Hall of Famers of this set as well, you know, just kind of pick them up here and there. And with how the backgrounds oftentimes are very, are, are black and are, they're dark, like on the Stargell. On the Ryan has a dark background. And I've noticed that, you know, that there's a lot of uh, snow on the white background on these 76 cards. You don't seem to get that on 77s because there's not a lot of darker backgrounds. Um, that's that's one thing I've noticed that's been, it's been real tough to find. You know, you can find an eight, but it's got snow in the background. That's mm -hmm. the stars that you have. It looks like a 10 to me. <laughs> it looks real good. Yeah, I, I bought this card raw and, and, and this card I actually do have in PSA as well. Um, because uh, going back to OCD, I have that PSA, um, SGC Hall of Fame set. You know, I'll just make one comment here, and that is uh, it's hard for me to wrap my head around the notion that 76 is vintage. Um, you know, it, 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 I mean, this is my boyhood here that you have up there, and uh, I, I guess the years have just gotten, you know, <laughs> uh, I've gotten old, but uh, uh, 76 just doesn't seem vintage, and I, I just don't I know. mind in my head of uh, vintage was everything before 1980 or whatever the number is these days. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of people say looking for 75 and before, which I'm yeah. always like, why not 76? Yeah. Why not 77? Yeah. But you're right. Yeah, it seems to me like if in vintage basketball, it's been, you know, anything like pre-1980 has been called vintage. You know, it's, you know, if, if that's the case, we're all like well into being vintage people, certainly. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I just, it's, it's interesting to me, but I can tell you this, I've been trying to pick up as many seventies cards of hall of famers as I can in eights, eight and a half, things like that. Because, you know, at some point these cards are going to be looked at like the sixties cards are, you know, where you're like, wow, that's an eight. It's a high grade, you know, um, at least that's kind of, how I've been approaching collecting seventies cards for the last, you know, four or five years. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I guess, guys, we're going to move on to the next one. We're, we're trying to get in four sets here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Topps Baseball 1960 now. Um, going to go to the slideshow here. <clears throat> so I was going to talk about this a little bit. And these are cards also for, from my childhood, Don, just, just like you had with the 76 uh, Pirates team card. Um, this Aaron and Banks I found in a bin underneath uh, a table at a comic book shop in about 19... 82. Wow. So, and they were all beat up, you know, well, not beat up, but it's eventually I submitted them. Um, but, but to me, what I couldn't believe when I looked at the back of these cards was as a youngster, how good these guys were. The numbers were staggering on the back of these cards. Yep. You know? um, and Banks has a trophy on his about the fact that he had won the 59 MVP and the 40, 58 MVP. Um, and the back of Hank Aaron's card shows uh, the 59 season was his best season. Even though he didn't win the MVP, he had over 400 total bases. So I just, as a kid, I held on to these and treasured them. You know, hey, do you have a Hank Aaron? Do you have Ernie Banks? Yeah, I do. And they were kind of beat up, but I had to get them slabbed. Love them. Why did you start down the path of 1960? I, 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 uh, I'm just curious. I mean, it's a gorgeous set. I love it. But why did you uh, start down this one? This is kind of random. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the question. It's kind of yeah. random because I, I, the first at this comic book shop, I started pulling out cards. Again, they were like thousands of cards underneath these two large tables. And uh, I, I was in there to look at comics initially, but yeah. Um, yeah. I pulled out 59. I, I pulled a 59 maze and I had known about these guys. Um, my grandfather was older and, and in Ch from Chicago, like you, Chuck. Um, and he's talk about Babe Ruth and he loved the White Sox. But, you know, these these guys he would talk about as well. And so these are some of the first cards I came across. And I just couldn't they were they were horiz, they were horizontal. You know, we were collecting whatever. in you know, in the 80s, in the early 80s and everything was vertical. Mm -hmm. um, and so these were just the, the colors on them, how the horizontal uh, presentation, the colors. I mean, you know, you've got these prominent each card seems to have at least three prominent colors on it. And as a kid, you're just, you know, pre-video games, 
you're just like blown away by the colors. So that's that's really kind of why I got into it uh, mm -hmm. with the 60 top set. Mm -hmm. um, I thought though, when I first got these cards that, that one of them might be fake. Mm -hmm. And this is why, because mm -hmm. the backs were different. And I, I didn't know that they were actually, um, I, well, you know, growing up in the eighties and, and I don't know when, when a series stopped, but these cards were issued, I think in five or, or six, six series. Um, you know, I didn't know anything about that when we were growing up. It was the traded sets were like the, the only issue after the major issue. Do you guys know when, when the series stopped with tops? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think th these sixties cards, they were done in uh, 1960 was done in six series. And yeah. so I guess some of the series have, this cream back and the other series have the uh, gray back. Mm -hmm. um, and from what I've found, uh, I guess 375 to 440 have both backs. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought, you know, when you're buying two different cards, I'm thinking one of these has got to be a fake. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they weren't. Makes thankfully. sense. The 56 sets like that as well. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And and here's some more Hall of Famers. And I guess what really attracted me to the set, Chuck, to continue with answering your question was there were so many Hall of Famers in this set. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you had the holdover, um, the older guys. And I guess this is Ted Williams isn't in the set, but he played in 60 and he was the last uh, pre-war Hall of Famer. I guess you could argue that Spawn and Musial were as well. But, you know, he played in the thir in 39 and he's not in the set. He's in the Fleer set, the 60 Fleer set, but mm -hmm. he was still playing at this time. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have so many, I mean, Frank Robinson, I mean, imagine we've got the all-star game coming up. Imagine having an outfield where you're like, okay, we got Frank Robinson and actually Frank Robinson didn't play in the 60 all-star game as far as I know, but Willie Mays. And then you've got Bob Clement, Roberto Clemente, and you get Stan Musial and you don't even, and that's not even counting Henry Aaron. I mean, it's just an amazing, amazing uh, amount of hall of famers. Yeah. Um, and, and then, you There's know, with my all time favorite players right there. So thanks for sharing this. I had to throw it in there, Don. Yeah. So, so I just uh, I was doing some research on this, too, and I didn't know this. Um, but in 1960, there were two all star games. Huh. Um, and guess which league won both of them? National. National. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got, you know, well, a while, lot. didn't it? Yeah, they won a bunch of them in a row. But I mean uh, that they had one in the middle of the year and one at the end of the year, I think. In 60, it was one in July 11th and one in July 13th. Oh, really? So, and I don't know why that was. Um, I thought they used to have two, but I could be wrong, and someone on, on the chat might know. Mm -hmm. and, and also, to the to the tune, some of these are, are in, you know, they're around sixes, sevens. Uh, to go along with the pop reports with PSA, uh, like you were talking about, uh, Chuck, you know, you have uh, 1960 has very few PSA 10s. Mm -hmm. um, there's no PSA tens of the Clemente. There's three PSA tens of the of the Mays. Um, there's no PSA tens of the Mantle. Um, there's only three Yazes in tens, one Kofax in a ten, uh, two Marises in a ten, one Yogi in a ten. So it's a very difficult set. So when mm -hmm. you start getting into anything like seven and higher, yeah. pops are really low, especially eights and eight and a halves. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, I have a few more cards here, and then we're going to talk 64 stand-ups. Uh, I had to throw in uh, Gibby here and uh, the underrated Eddie Matthews. Um, and and this, you know, this is another one that's important because th that 60 top set has Jim Cott's rookie, um, Yastrzemski's rookie, the Sport All-Stars, both of those. Willie and then the, and Willie McCovey, yeah. Um, and, but that second-year cards of, of Bob Gibson, uh, which I think is a pretty underrated card in the hobby, frankly. Love the centering on these uh, examples. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the yeah. all-star cards, they have these all-star yeah. cards and, uh, of, you know, for a long time, you know, the mantle all-star cards were, if you didn't want to get into mantle, those oh. all-star cards were the way to go. Yeah. Uh, but this is a uh, Hank Aaron, um, Mays yeah. is in this set. Um, there's, there's a, bu a bunch of, a bunch of the guys you would expect to be, uh, on the all-star mm -hmm. uh, team are. And I don't know the affiliation with Sport Magazine. I know Sport has the first All-Star set in 58, or Sport All-Stars. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, I mean, if they paid a premium, if somebody out there knows if they paid money to Tops to put their name on these cards. But they seem to be on at least the first three or four All-Star sets. Huh. And winding down here. Chuck, I know you were talking about the mantle to me uh, yeah. previously. 
Yeah, at the National, and I hope I meet uh, some of you guys at the National in person in a few weeks here in Chicago. Uh, if, if, if you see me, say hi. I'd certainly like to say hi to you. Um, this mantle card is is one of my favorites, and I, I don't own it. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for it, and it's, it's high on my list right now. Just love it. Yeah, I, th these cards, you know, the mantles used to be had for basically $100 per grade. Mm. You know, back this is this is back like seven, eight years ago, uh -huh. um, you know, and, and but those mantle cards always go for a premium. I mean, this mantle is, is worth more than the Kofax, I'm sure, even mm -hmm. though the grade is four lower. Mm -hmm. um, and I think 1960 was also last year that there were eight teams in each division. Mm -hmm. um, they expanded in 61 and there became more teams. Um, and, and soon the idea of winning the pennant would go away and there'd be a, a playoff. Yeah. Um, and that was Koufax before he became Koufax. Um, and then eventually I was able to get fortunate enough to get a Henry Aaron that was in a higher grade, um, working my way up from the four that I had had. Right. Um, so this, this is the reason I put this card in there is because it is one of my, my favorite, absolute favorite baseball cards. Um, mm -hmm. You know, 50 Bowman Jackie, some other cards in the hobby. But to me, uh, this, is, this is probably the best Henry Aaron card. That is beautiful. This yeah. Aaron on that. Yeah. That is really nice. So let's thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, let, let's talk. Uh, let's talk some stand ups. Um, All right. So we only have 10 minutes here, so I'll kind of go faster this. But um, this set caught my eye because it's different. Um, there's 77 cars in the set, 20 Hall of Famers. Technically, there's 21 if you include Joe Torrey. I don't collect guys that were managers that got in the Hall of Fame. So my set only has 20. Um, but Joe Torrey is in this set. And uh, it was kind of based on, I don't want to say based on, but before these cards, the 33, 34 stand-ups uh, came out before these cards. And these cards came in one-cent packs and five-cent packs. And uh, the one-cent packs, you could actually see through the pack and see who the players were, according to what I've read. It wasn't around in 64. And there is a, a box around 2007. Someone found a box of these a packs uh, at a garage sale, supposedly. Sold them on eBay for 25 grand. Okay. The guy that bought them because he could see through the cards made a complete set and sold just that part for 30,000. Still had the rest of the cards because he could see through it. Made a complete set. Um, there's five short printed, and I have the Hall of Famers. I know Yaz is the hardest. I think Billy Williams is in there, Ron Santo, this McCovey. And I know there's another one. I'm not sure who that is. But this is one of the few top set where every card, you see the full player. Um, you know, there, there's no profile picks. There's no inaction. It's, it's their full body posing. You know, like 57s have some but not the whole set. And granted, it's not nearly as, as large. Um, but well, hey, just, if, if stretch, if stretch stood up here, his head would be off the card. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, I don't want to say the rumor, but they said the green stands for the field and the yellow is supposed to be the sunlight in the background. So that's where that comes from. But um, this was just a unique set that I wanted to collect. And uh, I just think that, the coloring is beautiful. This card here is one of the toughest. Um, Yaz was obviously very young when this set came out. It's a short print. I got very fortunate and stole this card raw, which made me nervous that maybe something was wrong with it. And I sent it in and um, I paid pennies on the dollar within the last six months on this card, even with the grading. And you can't see it. The bottom is a little rough. There's a lot of chipping on these cards because of the blending of the color. So I think I got a favorable grade, to be honest. Um, but you know, Don, I, I, have, in the set. I, I never saw, I, I, I've known about the stand-ups and it, it makes me think about the, I think it was 86 Donruss, like us, you know, the height of uh, the Jose Canseco, Wally Joyner era. Donruss had stand-ups that you could buy and I had them in my room. Of, yeah. of the players at that time. And it was the same kind of philosophy, you know, perforated player and you pull it out and it gave it the three dimensional uh, well, look. That's the other tough part of finding the cards that aren't perforated. And these cards aren't numbered. It's a blank back. So there's no numbers on them anywhere. It goes in alphabetical order. So Hank Aaron's the first, Yaz is the last. Just like other cards, 
like the Pafco and the the one Gaddy you were mentioning, Chuck, they're the hardest condition cards in the set. Yeah, I have never seen. I did not see that Yaz ever before until you really? showed it in your video. Yeah, I had never seen it. I didn't know it existed, frankly. So what I like about these cards too, with no bordering, it's very tough to see that they're off centered. And, and this one actually is, but you can't see it because of the banner. But one way to look is the, the yellow box where the name is. You can see where it's positioned on the card. Mm. And on this one, it's very low. Oh yeah, sometimes yeah. Sometimes it's left to right. So I was that, thinking left to right. It's not bad at all. No, but you can't see it here, but it's it's on the edge of the bottom, which is oh. fine. You know, the Hank Aaron might be a little off center left to right here. Um, but that's really the only way you can mm. you can see that, you know, without the border, centering isn't is not a major issue on these cards. That's really interesting about the the top to bottom centering. Yeah, you can see yeah. it there with the Aaron and uh, right. let's uh let's look at the Clemente and we'll wrap this up and send it on to Ray to Ray and Philly soon. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the card that got me started. Oh, um, wow. Just one of my highest grades of this card. I probably couldn't even afford this card now um, for what I got it for. But Mangini has this in the background. And I kept, every time I'd look at his video, <laughs> a little pirate fan, I kept staring at that card. And this was the first one that I picked up. Not ever planning on building this set. It was just like, I need to get this Clemente. And then I got hooked. And, um, you know, as much as I love some of my other sets, this one's just unique. And, uh, you know, I don't see a lot of people talking about this set on YouTube. Rick does once in a while, Oddball Cards um, mentions these cards once in a while. But I'm just thrilled to uh, to have it. And and there's other popular players. You know, there's Elston Howard. There's... Uh, Frank Howard, there's, you know, uh, Bobby Richardson. So there's other well-known guys, but, you know, I was just going for the Hall of Famers. So, Wait, And I, I don't know if I've ever seen a card with Roberto Clemente in a throwing pose. Mm -hmm. You know, the, his strongest, yeah, one of his strongest assets as a ball player. Right. And this may be one of the only cards that shows him, like, given that wind-up to throw that ball from the fence to home with no hop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought about that, but that's a very good point. So I know we're short on time here, so I'll – Quit yapping here, but um, so that's the 64 tops stand ups. I'm going to remove that, guys, and I thank you guys for, for tuning in. I want to do a giveaway and then we'll wrap it up real quick and tell you where you can find Don and Chuck uh, on YouTube and in other places. Um, the, I want to do a giveaway right now, and I'm going to look in the comments. Um, this is a soccer box we're giving away courtesy of Bench Clear Media, and I'm going to look in the comments here. It's a 2020-21 Topps Chrome uh, Champions League uh, box that they're giving away. And so, guys, uh, the first person to post, the trivia question is as follows. Uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate all the comments. The, the trivia question is, um, where was the first Champions League final? Where was the venue of the first Champions League final? So the first person to post that in the comments will get that box uh, courtesy of BenchClear. Um, maybe that's, maybe that's a little obscure of a question, but they got lost vintage baseball guys. It's gotta be the, ve the venue, yeah. not, not the place, uh, the, the actual venue, not, not a, a, a city or a country. It's not Raymond James stadium or, or Cardinals stadium, the actual venue guys. I wanted it to go to a. Go to a soccer fan. Adam D gets it. Parc de Princess. My French is terrible, but um, Adam uh, Adam D gets that. Uh, you have to be a member of Bench Clear Media or uh, registered with them. Anyway, guys. So I'm going to wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. It's been a pleasure to have you guys on. I really do appreciate it. Um, you just bring such a great knowledge of, of the game and the cards. Um, Chuck and Chuck, go ahead. Where, where can people find you? Your channel. Uh, maybe right. contact you if they're interested and have some have some Gaudi questions or some T206 questions. Yeah, just uh, on my channel and then we'll, uh, we'll we'll take it offline from there. But Chuck Northside guy is my handle. And uh, I don't know if we'll post a link or not to it, uh, George, afterwards. But uh, um, uh, love talking about uh, various vintage cards always never gets old. And I can't wait to hear uh, Ray from Philly's. Uh, presentation next and, and all the rest of Hobby Palooza. So I really, I've, I've been watching the comments and I really appreciate the, all the uh, support here today, guys. So uh, a real pleasure. Thank you so much, Chuck. Don, where can they reach you? 
Yeah, I'm on Don's Field of Dreams cards here on YouTube. Um, so many great comments. And, and George, thank you. Chuck, thank you. This hour went so fast, I could go another sure hour. <laughs> so good. And, uh, and, and even the talks we had before this prep, and it, it's been so much fun to even get to know you two better. And uh, this was a blast. And uh, just thank all you guys for watching and, and glad you enjoyed what we had to show because w the three of us are very passionate, as many of you guys are too, about what we do. And, and we really appreciate the kind words. So, guys, thank you so much, Don. Thank you so much, Chuck. Uh, maybe right. we'll wrap after the show here and uh, take a, go take a uh, saunter over to Ray from Philly's channel. He's going to be talking yeah, some vintage with another great yeah, with, and Mike, who's doing it with him. Great guys. Yeah, uh, Mike, this baseball card life, I believe. Uh, so take care, guys, and keep collecting.